Just Like It's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I'm your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like It's 101. It is an electronic classroom. You are in your seat wherever you may be. As a result, it's a correspondence course of sorts. Many of you write in with your questions or comments or complaints or criticisms. And uh, you could write in just like these people did. Write to tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. We read every email that comes in, and we use many of them on the air like this one. From Javi in Los Angeles. Javi writes in and says, Hey, Tom, I'm 27 years old. I'm an IT manager for a large plant, which is a pretty good role for my age. And life seems to be going great. At least it did until last Wednesday. He says, I have this great girlfriend. I've been with her for three years. Now, I know... Um, I shouldn't have a girlfriend before 25, and I tried not to, but I tapped her. She's in L.A. 8. Then my ears opened up, and believe it or not, the stuff that was coming out of her mouth was actually interesting. She loves sports, doesn't bother me about football, wants to get married, but not anytime soon. She's had her bitchy moments and her dry spells of sex, but when I threatened that I could get it somewhere else, those dry spells ended. Not to mention that... I, like you, have had hard times trying to make something of myself. While I was struggling, she never judged, never regretted, never asked for anything, yet made sure I stuck to it while she herself was working her way up the corporate ladder. Good times. So, on to the plot. Last Wednesday, I walked into Radio Shack, and there was this hot, I mean hot, Latina girl working the counter. Not the brightest, my favorite, he says. And no kids, surprisingly. And she tried to help me get a cell phone. We did the whole flirting thing, and then I left. Two days later, she text messages me. I didn't give her my number, which means she memorized it. Now we go back and forth, and it turns out this girl is a freak. Sending me pictures of the fun bags, the thong, and yes... Uh, more. Pictures of everything. Every little nook and cranny. Well, she calls me and she wants to get together to, quote, ride me like a burro. Now, I'm not familiar with burro style, but I can only imagine. But I'm stuck because I have this girlfriend who is great and pretty and loyal. And while she may not know anything about politics or the Federal Reserve, she sure as hell knows ben, who Ben Roethlisberger is and that he didn't cross the goal line. And then I have Latina Heat, dumb, unaware, willing, and hornier than me. I'm not married, and I'm happy. Yet, I am also not a pussy. And I want to tap anything in a skirt, minus fatties or McGruff the crime dog. Moral problem here, Tom. What the hell do I do? Signed, Javi, in Los Angeles. Javi, uh, my response is the following. If you need to tap other ass... You shouldn't have a girlfriend. At some point, take it from somebody who's been there, you will get caught. And when you get caught, two things are going to happen. One, your girlfriend is going to flip out and get angry at you and uh, make your life a living hell. Two, this girl who you supposedly love is going to be miserable. Clearly, if you need to tap other ass, you can't be in a committed monogamous relationship. You can't. You will know when you are ready for a committed monogamous relationship because you will not want to tap any other ass. By the way, for some people, that day never comes. Some people will always want to tap other ass. Some people will never be able to be faithful. Ever, ever, ever. Really, those people should not get into monogamous relationships. Learn how to make your own dinner and do your own laundry. Or hire a housekeeper. It's cheaper than a wife. Cheaper than a girlfriend. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you. 
Plus, when they're done cleaning the house, doing your laundry, they are gone. So my response to you, Javi, is, uh, look, if you want to tap other ass, if you need hot chicks, you're going to have to dial down the relationship with your girlfriend. Because you're clearly not ready for a committed relationship. And you're telling me you don't just want to tap this one chick at the radio check. You want to tap anything in a skirt. That is somebody who's not ready for a committed relationship. So as nice as your girlfriend may be, or as much of a sports fan as she may be, or as patient as she was when you were out of work or whatever, that's some way to thank her by tapping other acts under the guise of having a monogamous relationship. That make any sense. So uh, if there's some way you can step down the relationship and keep tapping her ass, great. But what is the point of having a relationship with somebody where you have to lie to them all the time and then having this parallel universe, as they call it in science fiction movies? You ever see a movie about a parallel universe? Like you have this whole secret life you can't share with her? You know, part of the reason people have relationships... I've had many of them, and now I am not in a relationship at all with anyone. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a wife. I am totally alone. And one thing I know from experience is that the reason people have relationships is because they are looking for intimacy. And intimacy means being able to be completely honest with the other person and knowing that that person is being completely honest with you. Now, for me, I don't know if I've been able to be that person or to find that person. And so I live alone. But um, I don't see why you'd want to be in a relationship with somebody and then have to lie to them about where you are, what you're doing, who you're doing. What's the point of that? You want your cake and you want to be able to eat it too. But what happens if you get caught? Your life is going to be a mess. My, my recommendation to you is try to step your girlfriend down to a booty call. And uh, if that doesn't work, keep tapping the other ass. Be done with it. Jeff in Irvine, California, writes it, says, Tom, while channel surfing this evening, I happen to come across American Idol. This is from a couple of weeks ago, actually. He says, while it's not a show I usually watch, I stopped to watch the profile of a 25-year-old contestant named Chris Daughtry. By the way, I've read this letter on the air before, but we're reading it now in the context of 101. He is married to an older, heavyset woman who already had two kids when they met. I don't know how old she is, but her kids are seven and five. As they interviewed her, she teared up and said this was her husband's dream. She acknowledged that he could have done so much more in his career and his life if he hadn't married her and taken responsibility for helping to raise her kids. She also said that he's such a, quote, great guy, and he provides well for them through the job he works at a local car dealership. Okay, segue into the audition room. When Chris stepped in front of the judges, that guy nailed it. He has a phenomenal voice, and he looks the part of a rocker. He already has his own band, and this show may be just the exposure he needs to take it to the next level. I had to laugh to myself, says Jeff. As his fat wife cried, because if he makes it big on American Idol, you watch. He'll trade in that high mileage heifer for a younger, hotter model. One with no kids and no junk in the trunk. The irony that she's on national TV and sniffing about what a good man he is just makes it that much funnier. Keep an eye on this situation, says Jeff. I think the guy's going to become famous very quickly. And the one single mother will soon be single again with a few more miles on the odometer and probably buckets more of tears. Love the show, Jeff in Irvine. Wow. Finally, I'll read one more here, and then uh, we'll go to your calls coming up at 1-800-5800-TOM. By the way, uh, you can write to us just like these people did. Write to us at tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Uh, here's a listener named Rebecca, who says, I am a new listener in Mesa, Arizona, and I just want to give you kudos for your talk show. I think that it's helpful to both women and men. I feel a lot of the women that call in are bitter that you are teaching men how to play the field. Or maybe it is because you are telling men how women really are. Needless to say, I do agree that most women are out for men's money and to be taken care of. Yes, women do play mind games with men to F them up. 
Women who don't agree with you should ask them what games they played to trap their man. Women also need to ask themselves how long did it take for them to give up their ass when they found out how much he made or could possibly make. Keep up the good work, Rebecca in Mesa. Rebecca, thank you for that. All right, my job here as your professor in this classroom is to uh, keep you out of relationships, to try to get you to the shortest distance between two points, to remind you that dating equals porking. You are going on dates to get laid. You are not there to make new friends. You're not there to drink Frappuccino or watch foreign films or all the things they say on Match.com. What you are there to do is to get her panties off. No relationships, no moving in together, no marriage. The shortest distance between two points. And I, as your professor, it is my job to get you there. If you've got questions about how to do that, you call in. If you've got comments, you've got objections to that, you call in as well. If you've got complaints, I will hear them. We like a vigorous classroom discussion. We like open debate here in the classroom. Yeah, you are a Like This 101 student. It's your turn now to step up to the plate. Tom, Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. The more you educate our men, you're pretty much screwing me over. I mean, I love going out and not taking a penny, just my ID. I mean, come on, cut me some flat. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> I'll give you a bone. It's Likis 101 on the Tom Likis Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101 at one 800 800 tom Let's start off with Mike on Likas 101. Hello. Hey, Professor. How you doing? Doing okay, Mike. Excellent. So I have a question because I have a great girl. I'm married. I'm 29. Life's going well. Um, started school a little bit late. Used to be a loser, turning things around. Have the potential to uh, be making some good money in a couple years. Right. But I'm a new listener, and I didn't realize the importance of a prenup, and I never got one. Okay. So I wanted to see what your advice was to us married men who love our wives. They're great women. No no intentions of leaving them, but how do we protect ourselves in case they turn evil someday? Well, keep in mind, uh, you pretty much let the horse out of the barn. Uh, you can get something called a post nuptial agreement, but keep in mind that your wife is highly unlikely to want to sign something like that. Mm -hmm. And it will cause problems in your marriage if you now ask in retrospect for something that you should have asked for in the first place. I agree with you. You've lost all your bargaining power. How many uh, years have you been married? About two years. Two years. All right. Well, all I can tell you, you had, you have to, by the way, do you make more money than she does? Right now, she makes way more than me. All right. Well, in that case, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Right now, I have nothing to worry about. But I'm in college right now. I'm a senior. And uh, when I graduate, I'm looking at a six-figure income. Well, maybe that's the time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm only half kidding. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, you know, without a prenup, if, uh, you're going to become what? Like a professional, like an architect or a doctor? Or yeah. Something? Engineer. An engineer. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, not only uh, do you run the risk of having to pay huge vagina money at that point, mm -hmm. but uh, engineers and architects generally form corporations, mm -hmm. LLCs or out-and-out -out incorporations, and uh, she could end up owning half of your business because you have nothing to protect you. If you form a company, she owns half. Mm -hmm. So is there anything other than post-nup I could do to protect myself now? Well, you should certainly talk to an attorney and ask that question. All right. My experience with this, and I'm not an attorney, I'm a layman who's been divorced four times. Of course. And, uh, I will tell you that my experience has been, um, without a prenup or a post-up, the only other thing you can do is uh, to fight defensively, and that is to get out as early as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know you don't want to do that because you're in love, but I'm, I'm telling you... I'm not that bad. We've been together for a long time, so I'm not puppy dog or anything. All right. Well, the minute you form a corporation, she owns half. All right. Let's say you open an office, you know, an engineering firm or a consulting firm or whatever. Mm -hmm. She's your partner by law. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a way around that, an attorney and an accountant are the people to talk to. But I don't right. know. I don't know that there is. But I highly recommend that in advance of, of of beginning your new life with your new profession, that you would want to consult with professionals about that. 
Excellent. Now, by the Thank way, by the way, let me let me tell you, hire good ones. A uh, little word of advice: I've never lost money hiring good professionals ever. I've always made more than I've spent. All right. You hire a good right. attorney, and you almost always will make it back in spades. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you very much, Professor. Can you take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus? Here you go, Mike. Thank you, Jesus. Mike is 101 with George. Hello. Hey, Tom, it's uh, George. I know, I, I just said that. I get this girl that I've been dating for about, I don't know, three years now, and she still hasn't put out. She keeps pulling the whole, I'm not ready yet, maybe in a little bit. And I just don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. What should I do? What do you think I'm going to tell you to do? Dump the bitch and find someone else. That's right. By the way, at 22, why are you dating someone for two years anyway? I don't know. We kind of, I don't know, kind of high school sweetheart. No, no, forget that. Stuck in a situation. Forget that. Forget that. You're not stuck in a situation. I know. I just keep keep hoping for it. Maybe it'll be the best sex I've ever had. But no, no. It. When you have to wait that long, George, it's never the best sex you've ever had. It's usually the worst sex you've ever had. Really? Yes, because someone who's good at it wants to have it. Good point. Number one, she's not ready yet. She'll be one of those who have to do 16 hours of foreplay. You'll be down there with a miner's hat on. You'll be coming up for air every 30 minutes. Yeah, it doesn't sound like too much fun. It's not. Now, by the way, I'm willing to bet, George, let me write this down. Right. I'm willing to bet that over the last two years you've been, quote-unquote, monogamous. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Pal, monogamous means having sex with one person. You're not monogamous. I'm not even having sex, huh? You're not even gamus. You're, you're like gamus. That's what you are. You're not having sex with anyone. You're you're a, you're a, you're a eunuch at this point. Yeah, that's, uh, Why are you saving yourself for somebody who uh, isn't giving you what you need? Why? I want you to tell me the reason. Honestly, I kind of enjoy her company. So have her as a friend. That's true. I wouldn't be losing anything. Right. And by the way, that that's not even you can't be friends with a chick anyway, ultimately. Because the minute she has a boyfriend or a husband, he won't want you calling over there and she'll drop you like a hot rock. Yeah, that's true. You know, this one this one chick I used to know who I used to have sex with, and she told me I was the best she'd ever had. The best. And uh, I didn't want to move into a permanent or serious relationship with her. Didn't want to have kids and she wanted to. So that wasn't going to happen. So we talked occasionally about being friends with benefits or about just being friends. And we were friends until she met her new boyfriend. And then I got the following voicemail message. And it sounded like he was sitting right next to her. Hi, this is Miss X uh, calling you. Uh, uh, please don't call my cell phone anymore. Please don't call my home phone. And please don't send me any more emails because I'm in a committed relationship. Goodbye. Wow. So what kind of friendship is that? None. I right. Guess. That's my point. So what you really need to do, if you like her company, fine. You'll be her company if you feel like it until she finds a boyfriend or a husband or somebody she does put out for. And that guy won't want you around anymore, and she will not be loyal to you. She'll kick you out of there. Nah. So be prepared for what's going to happen. But Right. Meantime, you need to get sex. I mean, by God, would you stop urinating because you're with one person? And she said you're not allowed to urinate in the house? No. No, you would. You'd go behind the bush. Exactly. That's what you need to be doing. Behind the bush. By the way, now, there's something you left out of the story, but that you did tell the dean. Do you remember what it is? Uh, I can't think of it, no. She's not a virgin. Pardon me? She is not a virgin. Yeah, well, I I said I didn't think she was. I don't I don't know that for a fact. That but never. You have reason to believe she said. Say, well, did, did you talk to her about it? This is your good friend. This is your girlfriend for two years. You can't talk to her about sex. It's not really something I'd like to know about her past, honestly. Uh, uh, George, man up, grab your sack. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That is the kind of thing you need to know. 
Right. You know why you need to know that? Because if she has and she's not putting out for me, there's probably a reason. <laughs> That's right. She better be a virgin, George. Uh, and I guarantee you she's probably... Now, how old is she? She's 22 also. She's 22. Uh-huh. Has she ever had a boyfriend before you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say yes. I'm sure she has. But you don't even know. And you don't want to know about that. See, you're a little boy in this respect. When you grow up to be a man, George, uh, you will want to know that information, and you will use it accordingly. You're, you're a little puppy dog right now. A real man asks these questions. A real man doesn't go around saying, oh, I don't want to know about that. You know what? Anybody who knows how to perform a sex act has probably had it before. That's true. All right. I mean, what do you want? You want a virgin who knows how to suck a basketball through a garden hose? It's always nice, but it probably is not going to happen. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Nobody naturally knows how to do that. It's true. You understand that? I do. It is, it is what they call an unnatural act. Ask the religious types. That's what they call it, an unnatural act. That means this is not like, uh, you know, breastfeeding. That, that people just kind of figure out, like babies know where to grab and where to go. This is something you have to learn by doing. Uh, no virgin knows how to do that. That's true. Appreciate so, the, uh, the advice. Where's your dad? Probably left your mom, I imagine. Oh, uh, yeah, when I was about seven. It shows, George. All right. Hey, can you take me out with a screaming orgasm and a bong hit? Well, I, I guess I'll be the only one. Here you go. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Take some. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. I've talked to a lot of women, and... Did you know that a lot of women don't like your show? Yes, I did. It's the Tom Likas Show. Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas 101, I am your professor. Anonymous has a question. He writes in, by the way, again, I am reading the email while I'm working here. So send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com and I will read it. Anonymous writes in and says, I started a company last year, but I will be getting married this year. Does she automatically own half of that? What are the rules on it if you own the company before you get married? Thanks, Professor. Anonymous. Well, Anonymous, uh, you definitely want to consult with an attorney before you get married. First of all, I'm not an attorney. I'm going to give you what I know as a layman, but I'm going to recommend that you speak to an attorney. Okay. It's my understanding that if you don't have a prenuptial agreement, and you what they do what they call commingling funds, commingle assets. In other words, you know, you've got your checking account that the two of you use to buy groceries or pay the visa bill or whatever, and you use any of that towards the expenses of your business, any of it. Yeah? She's gonna own half of it even if you start it beforehand. Or she's gonna own a portion of it. She'll have a case to own a portion of it. You need a prenuptial agreement, and you can't get married without it. You run the risk that that company will be in play. You don't want the company to be in play. Uh, don't. Don't be a puss. You go to an attorney. You ask him these questions. And then you uh, look at the possibility of getting a prenup. And uh, if she won't sign a prenup, I don't care how in love you think you are. Two out of three marriages in Southern California end in divorce. One out of two nationwide. And... Um, you can't get married without a prenup. You can't, especially if you have any assets. I'm telling you right now, you may have to dump that bitch. Go to the attorney. Good luck. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Tony in Chicago on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
How you doing, Tony? No, you're Tony. First time listener. First time listener. Well, Tony, you're Tony, and I'm Tom. How yeah. you doing, Tom? I'm sorry about that. Doing okay. <laughs> what can I do for you, Tony? Okay, well, um, I'm uh, I'm married, 20 years, three kids, but uh, the wife's not putting out. Mm -hmm. What should I do? I have opportunities, but I keep on uh, turning them away. Well, Tony, I'm going to give you uh, some advice uh, based on my experience being married and divorced four times. Okay, uh, Among uh, the advice I'm going to give you is this. In 20 years, I don't know what the uh, laws are in Illinois. In fact, I don't know what they are in California. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but I know that in California, if you've been married 10 years, you have to uh, end up paying uh, at what we call vagina money, which the rest of the world calls alimony. Vagina money is uh, monthly payments for the past use of a vagina. It's like if you lease a car for seven years and you turn the car in early, you end up having to make payments on it. Or you buy a car and you get six months of payments, then you have a head-on collision and the car is totaled, but you still got payments. That's what vagina money is, okay? You can't use the vagina anymore, but you're still paying for its past use. Right. And um, so you run the possibility of having to pay forever. And you do need, if, if you want to get out of this situation, you need to talk to an attorney. You can't make her put out if she doesn't want to put out. Right, right. But the thing is, you know, I got, we got a lot of stake. We got a lot of stuff. You know, I, we have a business and everything, so I just can't walk away. Right. But still, I'm frustrated. You well, know, it's, it's, I, I'm the last one to recommend that people go out and find it outside. I am. But you're one of those people who's in a situation where you're a prisoner. Right. I mean, yeah, you I could think. take that chance and try to get out, but uh, by the same token, you've been together so many years. I mean, did she have anything to do with building your business? Did she help you at all? No, 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 no. It's no. all you. Yeah, see, yeah, you yeah. needed a prenup 20 years ago is what you need. Right, yeah, but that time, uh, no, I didn't even think about it. Didn't, no. didn't even, no, didn't even worry about it, but right. still, you know. And when, when, you know, tell her, when you tell her you need it, what does she tell you? Uh, no, she just, well, just won't discuss it. She's just, just one of these... Just won't, won't talk about it. She won't talk about it. Well, she doesn't have to because she doesn't have any paper, doesn't have any uh, anything you can hold over her head. Right. Yeah, you know, you gave up all your bargaining chips. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I have to imagine if she stopped giving it up, at some point you got it somewhere else. So I can't, I can't go behind the bush either, huh? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, have you ever done that? Uh, I did it about two times, about, maybe about five years ago. Right. Well, and, uh, didn't get caught for nothing. But, it's it's uh, not something I generally recommend to guys, uh, but I will just say this: uh, 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 adultery is not illegal anymore. And if she refuses to put out, you know, men have needs, right? And, right. But the thing is, you don't want to get caught, right? I mean, I generally tell guys if they feel the need to go outside the marriage, yeah, don't get married or get a divorce. Right. And uh, divorce if that's feasible, that would be my first recommendation to you. If it's not feasible, uh, you've got to get your needs met. I mean, if, let, me, let me ask you a question. If you were hungry right, and you, and you came home and the refrigerator was empty, would you go hungry? No, I'd go out. And get you'd go to out and get something to eat, probably better than what you normally have in the fridge. That's right. Right. <laughs> Last time it was better, a right. lot better. You'd be getting something really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, that, it, the sex is the same thing. We need sex like we need food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except uh, I wish my wife would, uh, would uh, understand that. <laughs> well, I, you know, again, she got you for what uh, she needed, a human wallet and a sperm donor. That's headaches, 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 every day, headaches. Isn't headaches. that what you are now? You're a human wallet and a sperm donor, right? That's, right. that's about it, yeah. But that's about all you are to her. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I just have to just keep on doing what I'm doing. The reason I call is because I, I, I'm uh, debating whether I should or shouldn't again. You know. That's well, I, here's what I'm going to tell you. If there's any way, after talking to an attorney, that a divorce would be feasible or palatable to you, mm -hmm. um, I would certainly look into it. Mm -hmm. I would look into it, uh, by all means. But if it turns out that the attorney tells you it's going to cost you too much, you don't yeah. like the ramifications of it, well, you've got to get your needs served somewhere. Well, it is going to cost me. <laughs> and then that's just it. I don't want it to cost. Well, I understand. Do you travel for business? Uh, no, I don't. No, it's all here in the city. Okay. So do you even have a plausible excuse for being out of the house? Well, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, you know, as a matter of fact, I should be home right now, but I'm I'm busy entertaining right now. But, uh, you know, I'm on my way home. You're busy calling the Tom Likas show right now. Yeah, yeah. Can't go home now. Fact, as a matter of fact, I just arrived to the house, and I'm uh, parked on the side and just 
before I get home. <laughs> I understand. I'm imagining yeah. you there in Chicago, parked on the uh, parked at the curb, calling in. That's great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing before right. I go around the block and go home. <laughs> I understand. All right, Tony. Well, yeah. uh, again, I, I normally don't recommend this to people because I think if there's any way out, you should get out. But if you mm -hmm. feel that you're trapped, yeah, you'll get your needs met. You will. Right. You're not going to go yeah. without sex until you die, are you? No, no, of course not. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. I've, I've been thinking of, uh, you know, there's some people that, some uh, girls that I've, uh, I've encountered, and uh, they've been willing, and uh, but I just haven't been willing. Well, just, make, make sure they don't know where you live. Uh, well, they, they, they don't know where I live, but they, they know that I'm married. I have three kids. No, 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 that's, uh, no, no but just make sure they can't follow you home, blackmail you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't want to be giving them any personal information that they don't need. Right, 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 right. You see? Okay, I guess uh, if I do get caught, I guess I'll be giving you a call. Yeah, that, you call me when the next uh, when the next crisis occurs, Tony. <laughs> yeah, when the next crisis comes up. Absolutely. You know, I, I call you, I say, you know what, I got caught. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tony. one 800 800 The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. Jay, hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing, son? Pretty good. Well, not that good. I've, I've gone on a date with this girl about three times. About three times or three times? Three times. And I've spent maybe close to $180 so far. And all we've done is kissed. So that means you've averaged $60 a date. Yeah. Now, you know the rule of this program. No, I don't. I'm, I'm actually, I've only listened to your show right. maybe about seven times. All right, $40 max. That's what I'm thinking. But I, I'm thinking I'm going to go a little more expensive because she seems like... No, 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 they're not worth it. And spending more money doesn't make them put out any more than they do if you spend less. In fact, it's my view, they're more likely to give you what you want if you spend less because you appear to have more self-confidence. I, I want to spend less, but I, I just... We went out to dinner and it ended up being a lot more. Then we went out to the movies on the second date. The more you spend, the more she's going to uh, resist. Well, the, the third date, we went um, to a hockey game and... That, I had, I got comped, but it's still, I mean, the tickets, I still use the tickets, even though they were comped, but... We, yeah, but you we, bought her beer or drinks or whatever, didn't you? Yeah, that was about $20. $20 total, and then you had to, uh, you drove there? Yep, I you, drove there. And you parked? Uh, free parking. Free parking, okay. So you total you spent was 20 bucks on that day? On that day, yeah. All right, but then you, that means you spent $160... On the two total, uh, all right. Uh, so 140 of the two previous dates, an average of 70 dollars a day. Yeah, too much. But then the last date, you know, we uh, we kissed the, we kissed each other for a while in the in the parking lot after yeah. after the game. Where? Yeah, but where's the beef? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And she was supposed to go away out of town this weekend, and now she's telling me who, she's who's she going with? By the way. On business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the weekend. Doing business on the weekend. Yeah, I don't believe her either. Uh-huh. <laughs> but she's telling me now that she's she's canceling that trip. Yeah. To spend, to you know, spend it was business. Day. How'd she get out of that? Exactly. That's exactly my point. Yeah. So she's saying she's going to cancel this now and spend the weekend with me. Now, my dilemma is, do I, do I call her up now and, and say, yeah, I want to spend the weekend with you and... Just invite her over to my place. Well, you know? uh, yeah, certainly, because you shouldn't be spending any more money. And by the yeah. way, on this show, uh, in this classroom, it's three strikes, you're out. Yeah, and this is the fourth. It's already right. been three. Right. So essentially, uh, you know, if you're going to break the rule, which I don't recommend, uh, then you better just uh, go to the close. You've got to close the deal. Uh, there's not going to be any expensive dinners, no going to hockey games, no spending money. Coming to your house, it'll cost you a couple of English muffins and a glass of juice. <laughs> and, and, and if that doesn't work out, then... then Move then. on. Move on, Jay. Move on. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. 
The Tom Likas Show.